My name is Alexa Cummingdeer. My science experiment was to find one of the best ways to grow plants on another planet or moon. The concept of going and living somewhere that's not Earth is a worldwide fascination. In order to allow this to happen, we need a system that will help provide food and oxygen for our astronauts. I decided to tackle this problem with plants and find the best results on how to grow them. Our most recent rover, Perseverance, will help us learn if Mars ever had life forms on it, or if it has the right requirements to sustain human life. Yet, we still need food. The vegetable production system, known as Veggie, is a space garden residing on the space station. This veggie garden holds six plants and are kept under LED lights. However, the first plants to live on the moon were cotton, but this did not last long because of the moon's freezing temperatures and slow rotation of sunlight. I plan to make a system that would live with the astronauts and provide food. Based on my research, my hypothesis was that the plants with the LED lights would do better because of direct light compared to the more distant light of the plants with the sun. My independent variables were the days in which I recorded my plants, and the place where I put them. My dependent variable was on how much they grew in that time, based off where I put each group. I controlled how much water each plant got each day, how much light the sea plants received, the type of soil they were planted in, and the type of plants I wanted to grow. First, I researched which plants would be best to grow and experiment with in order to get the best results, and I chose radishes. I used soil by Turf King called all-purpose potting soil. Second, I planted half the seeds and placed them in a dark place with LED lights in order to simulate the conditions on Mars. These will be the seed plants. For the beginning of the seed plants experiment, I put them under white LED lights. I put the other half of the plants in the daylight, the O plants. I used toothpicks to mark where I planted each of the five seeds in each container. Third, I took pictures every day of the plant's progress. Every day, I have also marked the amount each plant has grown. Originally, I thought I would be using fish waste to help feed nutrition to the plants with the LED lights, but I didn't want to add any necessary materials if they were not needed. Each day, I took a picture of each plant and tracked their growth using a graph and ruler. I continued to make graphs of each plant's growth and the amount of days it took them to get there. In the end, I combined all the results and saw which plant system had the most successful outcome. On day three of my experiment, one of my cats knocked over the O plant system, so I started over on the O plants and recorded the data later on. However, it is the same time span for both experiments. This is a picture of the graph of the growth of the C plants, the ones under LED lights. As we can see, most of the plants got in the range of 2 and 4 inches. Near the end of the experiment, we can see that the plants stopped growing and stayed around the same height on day 18. This was because the plants are radishes and started growing their product beneath the surface of the soil. This is a picture of the graph of the growth of the O plants, the ones without LED lights. Based on the data, most of the plants got in the range of 1 and 3 inches, not as high as the C plants. Unlike the C plants, these plants did not stay around the same height near the end because it did not grow as fast, proving that the sea plants had a better and more hopeful result. This means that bringing plants to outer space and other planets might not be that hard. In fact, the plants even did better in a situation like that. The radishes I experimented on took about 25 days to start producing fruitful outcomes, meaning it is one of the fastest growing foods. While my graphs show the amount each plant grew, the pictures also helped us look at other factors, too. Overall, the sea plants also looked greener, more firm, and did not lean in a particular direction due to a direct light. This supports my original hypothesis, but I did not realize it would be a difference this big. However, my experiment was to find the best way to grow plants, not taking into consideration the amount of oxygen it provides and the carbon dioxide we provide them. In the beginning, some of my plants were knocked over by a cat, but that was the only flaw in my data. In the future, we could be using aquaponics to grow plants as well as fish. This would provide the astronauts two sources of food as well. In future experiments, I would make sure that the plants are in a more secure place so there could be no disruptions. All living things have the urge to grow and expand. For humans, our next step is our solar system. Looking at the whole, my experiment was one of many that needed to be done in order to colonize other planets or moons. 
In the past, astronauts have eaten frozen or dried food. After a while, this can get pretty bland. Ever since I was young, I have loved watching a flower grow, from a mere seed to a beautiful orange, white, or wonderful smell. I love learning about how plants grow and how it impacts our life. Another fascination I've always had was outer space. Like most kids, when I was young, I thought being an astronaut would be pretty awesome. But at the time, I didn't know the challenges it came with. As I grew older, I have learned more and more and would love to be a part of a team that helps make this reality more possible. While colonizing somewhere other than Earth will be hard, every small step counts, and we are learning more every day, thanks to people like me who are willing to help and ensure a hopeful future.